All right. I think we're waiting for a couple more people to join and they'll still join. We'll keep letting um, people in. But um, first, let's go around the room. I'm Dr. Morgan Russell. I'm the Associate Director of the Office of Multicultural Affairs. And I work with the director of that office to plan the Multicultural Pre-Orientation Program. Mm -hmm. I'll, yeah, I'll go along because I'm also related. So I'm Jason. I'm a rising senior. I'm one of the orientation leaders for the Multicultural Pre-Orientation Program, and I work with Morgan and Dr. Cade, who's the director. And hi, everyone. My name is Akila. I am the assistant director in the Office of Living and Learning and Roadmap Programs, and so we offer Roadmap to Success, which is our pre-orientation program, um, yeah, that we run. So we're excited to have you here. So I think Dr. Russell will go ahead first to talk about PRIO um, and then I'll jump in and talk about Roadmap. And then before we start, um, if you all have any questions, just feel free to use the Q&A option on the bottom of the screen. We'll be able to answer questions way easier that way. Um, so just feel free to submit questions at any time using that feature. But I will mute myself. And if the, if the chat feature is on, let us know where you're from, even though we can't see your faces. I love knowing where everyone is from that's on uh, the webinar. But I'm going to go ahead and start talking about PRIO. Um, this program has been in existence for 30 years now, um, and it was really created to provide um, our students of color, our multicultural students, a sense of uh, community, right? Um, our Students of color make up a small portion of the UR spider family. And so in saying that transitioning can be a little difficult. And so this program is created to, to help students with help our students of color with that transition. Um, three full days of some fun. We have some social activities um, that will help you kind of build those first, you know, new relationships with your peers in the program. Um, and then we also have uh, some really cool panels with some of our orientation advisors and leaders um, that I think last year, Jason, you helped facilitate one of those, which is really fun. Um, we also have sessions that help you interact with other offices on campus and understand some of the resources that were put here exactly for you. Um, and so some of those sessions look like uh, navigating the campus as a person of color. We talk about decoding the professor and how important those relationships are, uh, especially as a student trying to, you know, navigate how classes work, what deadlines look like, what does that syllabus mean? Um, and so our professors kind of give a first look at that. Um, we also bring in career services to talk about decisions. We bring in CAPS to talk about the hookup culture because we know that's a thing while you're in college too. But we, we create these uh, sessions that are really catered towards you as a student of color, your identity, right? And how empowering that is to come in as a person of color, how important that identity is for you and the, the value and the power of it here at um, you are. Uh, I tell students all the time when you're figuring out who you are as a person, it's important that you choose a university that helps your identities flourish, right? Um, and so that's one of the things that PRIO really focuses on is helping you feel like you belong here um, at the university. Even though um, you may not be the majority here, you still feel welcome. It's still a place here for you. And those are kind of the things that we share um, with PRIO. Um, it's small. Uh, to, to give it that family atmosphere, we really pride ourselves or making this feel like a, a small family um, away from home, right? And, and for our students that have attended PRIO, a lot of the times, these are their lifetime friends. These are their friends that they keep all four years or they stay as roommates the entire time. Um, but they've been able to create that foundation um, of community because while we are all here, you know, for college and learning, uh, there is such an important aspect of being social and finding your community and finding your peers uh, that make you feel um, welcome and, and like you belong here at the university. So those are some highlights of PRIO. Um, we also have a program for parents when you all first come and check in so that they can ask any questions, share, um, you know, any information with us, or they can find out more about the resources that are specifically catered for our multicultural um, students at UR. I'm going to pass it to Jason, kind of share his experience. Um, it's really cool because he 
um, has had a chance to serve as an orientation advisor, and now he is one of our three orientation leaders because he's awesome. Um, and so he's participated in a lot of the things uh, that we've done at Prio, and so he can kind of share uh, his experience. Yeah, everything that Dr. Russell said is like completely right. Um, Prio is really, at least for me, and I think for everyone, really, everyone that I've talked to and all of the friends I've made, it's really like a place to like, I think the quote, like building family is very um, vague as a term, you know, uh, I'm doing internship right now. It's like kind of corporate talk, but it's also pretty genuine in this sense that you'll make your friends really quickly. And it also doesn't mean that you'll be like tethered down somewhere, but once you get, once you transition from pre-orientation to orientation, you'll really have like a couple people that you know, at least. And I think that's really the purpose of pre-orientation is it helps prepare you for your kind of entrance into the wider population and helps you kind of have a few familiar faces. And really, I think um, I'm going to my senior year and all these years, I really still say hi and like maintain friends from when I attended Prio as a freshman. So as a first year going into the university, I was a Prio student and then Obviously, I've kept up with people because I was an orientation advisor for Prio two years and now as an OL, but still like people that uh, never like went back to be an orientation advisor, like I still know them, like I'll still talk to them and like we'll still remember things from Prio, which is crazy to think about that it's like three years later and it still had such a profound impact on us. It's really a three day program if you think about it. And yeah, also the the programs that she she talked about um, with the, I guess, like the educational side of it is all like very fun as well. Like it's not like you're getting lectured. It's only like we throw skits in there. We throw like songs in there. It's just like a fun time. And I think that the thing for me is like, there's no, there's no downside to doing a pre-orientation program. Like whether that's multicultural pre-o or roadmap or, um, you know, international or the Appalachian Trail one they're all just like beneficial and there's really, I, I don't see any downside to doing it at all. So I would encourage anyone to sign up for any of the pre o programs. Thanks, Jason, um, we have worked this year really hard to bring back some type of in-person or a pre-orientation program. Um, we had to modify it a little bit last year and we really um, have looked to our orientation advisors and leaders to help us create um, topics that are relevant. We have some sessions that are standard because we feel like any class of students should know these things, um, but we always look to our advisors and leaders to also share with us like what's going on you know, in the world that you know, we can make relevant in the sessions for Prio. Um, Akila, do you want to touch on the parent program? I will say that there are specific parent programs, but there also is a parent program open to all parents of uh, students participating in transition programs. And so for Prio, that specific uh, parent program, we don't know what it'll look like this year. Last year it was virtual. Um, and so we're still working to plan uh, through that with all the COVID restrictions. But we do have one specific for parents of students that are attending multicultural pre-orientation. And that is generally uh, that evening of move-in. Yeah, I can. So that's pretty much the answer as far as the parent program question goes. So it will be Sunday evening and there, there is um, there is parent programming for all parents who have students that are in transition programs and that'll be Sunday evening and also Monday morning. Um, but what that really specifically will look like is just gonna depend on COVID protocols and stuff. So we're hoping to get some of those specifics um, ironed out in the coming weeks. But I'll go ahead and start talking a little bit about roadmap um, just to give you an overview on that. And then we can answer any questions that you have about either of these um, transition programs. So Roadmap is a program geared towards students who are a little bit nervous coming to college. It might be they're the first in their family to go to college, um, or they just want to get a little bit of a head start on getting acclimated to the campus and getting acclimated to being in a college classroom. So it is, um, like all the transition programs, a three-day pre-orientation. Um, and so students who attend Roadmap 
select to be in a short course, which is basically like a mock class. Um, and it's on a variety of different topics. So I have our list pulled up for this year. Some of the titles are politics with zombies, rhythm and blues, I know Kung Fu, um, living a life of consequence, just to name a few. Um, and so these are all taught by a faculty member. There are 12 students per short course. And so during your time in roadmap, you'll have like time in class with your peers and with your faculty member. And really, there's no homework or anything. There's no grades attached to these classes. It's really just a chance for students to get acclimated to the classroom. Um, and the faculty member that teaches those classes also serves as their academic advisor until they declare a major. So it's a great way to not only connect with students who might have similar interests as you, but also to connect with the faculty member um, right early on, right in the beginning of your time at Richmond. And then outside of the short course, we do have programming that focuses on things like self-care, um, um, figuring out similar to what Dr. Russell said about um, Prio, things like talking about the hidden curriculum of college. And so figuring out how to navigate office hours and how to navigate talking to professors and things like that. Um, we also do have programming this year, um, you know, knock on wood that COVID regulations are all good, but we do take students off campus usually. So we do have um, city excursions that we take students on because um, we want to make sure that students know that Richmond, I think University of Richmond can sometimes feel like a little bubble, especially for the students. And so we want to make sure that they know that there's a whole city outside of the campus um, and that there's a lot of ways to get involved even off campus. Um, so we pair up with the Center for Civic Engagement to um, select different areas on off campus um, that we take students to. Um, but yeah, so really it's just a three day kind of crash course to college. Um, there's a lot of time for students to get to know each other through social programming in the evening. Um, there are two orientation leaders like Jason who work specifically on roadmap. Um, so they have been working really hard. Michaela and Kushi um, have been working really hard to figure out the social programming for these for this upcoming year and also to how best to serve the students that are gonna be in roadmap. So that's all I have for you all as far as roadmap goes, but let's look at- I will, if I could chime in, there are two important pieces. One of the questions that we get asked frequently is, can you do both programs? Unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, you can decide to participate in roadmap or you can decide to participate in multicultural prio. Um, unfortunately, that may be seen as the only downside to these transition programs is that they run at the exact same time. And so mm -hmm. we don't want to overwhelm you by trying to participate in both. And so you would have to ultimately choose one that you would like to apply to um, or in the form right now, there's a ranking system. So you can rank, you know, what it will be your first choice if you were accepted to either program. I also would like to highlight that um, when we use the term multicultural student of color, some students have never heard of that term before, right? And so we want to make sure that students know that it includes Black or African American students, um, Latinx students, Asian students, Asian American students. And so these are um, students of color within the United States. There is an international program for international students, um, but we look at students that are um, here, right here with us, uh, in the US to attend multicultural prio. I did see a question about excursions. That is a great question. So in the past, we've taken students off campus to do, um, I think last year, year before last, uh, they had gone to like a ropes course and we have some really fun activities that we do off campus. Um, they'll go on an essentials trip, which allows students to get their last minute essentials from the mall or Target or Walmart. But as far as, um, within the city. Uh, currently, we do not have excursions that are specific to taking students um, into the city. And then there is a question. I think you answered this, Morgan, but when is the program for specifically multicultural pre -opening? Yes, so it's it's normally around the evening um, of that move-in that Sunday. I think Akili kind of touched August. on that too. Yeah, August 15th. Yes, August 15th. Um, and so we normally send that information to students. It'll be in your, um, it'll, you'll get an electronic uh, schedule and it'll have the information for the parent meeting in there. If the parent, it, parent meeting ends up being virtual because of whatever restrictions we have, it's normally the week of earlier in the week, uh, the week before, earlier <laughs> um, in that week to allow parents to really just ask questions. Um, we've had 
parents ask questions specific to, you know, what does it look like for my student um, at a predominantly white institution or, you know, just questions that parents have to ask. And we make sure that this is a meeting just for parents to be able to share concerns, worries, um, advice with other parents. Um, and so we've seen it be, be really helpful for um, our parents in PRIO and for parents of all transition programs as well. So I see there's a question about the Endeavor program. So part of the, be, how, what am I trying to say? In order to participate in the Endeavor program, you're automatically enrolled in Roadmap. So you would go through Roadmap as an Endeavor student. Um, so you are already automatically in, if that makes sense. What I will say is that there are two se uh, separate pieces. So um, Multicultural Prio focuses mainly on community building, social identity, um, building a student and trying to be ready to enter the UR community as a person of color. Um, Roadmap has all of those pieces to some of those pieces too, but also looks um, at students that are really wanting to be academic and, and mm -hmm. get in there and see what is this gonna look like when I start taking classes. And so mm -hmm. those are some of the, the ways um, in, in how we differ, but both of those programs really offer, um, like Jason said, uh, mm -hmm. offer some really great benefits. Yeah, and I will say too that me and Morgan have been like talking over the you know semester and even in the summer to think about ways in which we can kind of have it so that roadmap students and multicultural prio students can kind of do things together, maybe attend sessions together, still um, and things like that. So we understand that it kind of sucks that you can't do both. And so we're trying to see ways that we can have so that students can have both experiences, maybe not fully, but have moments where they can join. Right. And so those are, um, and it may be some options for roadmap students to attend maybe one or two of our um, pre-o sessions, just so they can kind of see and start building that community too. Um, because we do know, you know, it, <laughs> you're not able to attend both. Um, but it would still give you a chance to to kind of uh, figure out who you are and see uh, your peers. And sometimes it's not always about uh, people that look like you, but maybe people that may share the same interests or backgrounds. Um, and then when will the pre-o schedule be released? Oh man, okay, so we are still <laughs> working on COVID uh, restrictions. Um, we have a skeleton of a schedule right now. Um, the plan is for that schedule to be released uh, after the July 1 deadline. So what you see on our website is pre-o at a glance. So you'll see a sample schedule from what we used in years past to kind of give you an idea. Um, what I will say, uh, students and parents that are listening, the thought process is that you would participate in all three days fully. Right, so it may be that you came here and you wanted to go shopping or you wanted to go <laughs> meet with your parents or some other extended family. While those things are really great, you may want to show up early to do them, but the point is that you fully immerse yourself in these experiences to be prepared uh, to transition. Your turn, Andy. Yeah, Andy. Andy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So there was a question in the Q&A about the Appalachian Trail program. So Emily, who runs our Appalachian Trail program is actually sick tonight. She is, wasn't able to join us, but I can tell you about the Appalachian Trail program. So it is also another transition program. They take about 30 students. Um, it is an application process um, and sorry, the dog is barking. And so it is a two day program. So students still arrive on Sunday. They have an orientation on Sunday night where they get their pack and their bag and their tents and all of those kinds of things. And then Monday morning, they leave very early in the morning. They go out to the Appalachian Trail, which is about an hour, hour and a half away from Richmond to the west toward Charlottesville. They will spend two days, so that is Monday and um, Monday night and Tuesday hiking. Um, they are with uh, two faculty staff members who are with them. They actually have alumni who meet them out at their campsite for the Monday night point, where they're actually able to engage with alumni. There will be a campfire and dinner and all those kinds of things. It is really for a variety of skill sets. Um, so if you have never hiked before, but just really interested in the outdoors, 
you can apply if you're really into hiking and have done all kinds of hikes. It's also for you too. Um, we do provide a number of equipment. So like you don't have to bring your own tent. The university provides like sleeping pads and sleeping bags and tents and all of that for students while they are on the program. Um, all of the programs uh, have an application deadline of July 1st. So you can, um, students can apply for any or all of them um, by July 1. So I hope that answers the Appalachian Trail question. Um, and, and if you have others, shoot them in the Q&A and I'll try to answer them too. Also, I wanna highlight, and Akila, I believe Romamp has the same, we just call them something different. In our program, we call them specials. Do you call it, yeah, and, you, and so uh, you're paired with an orientation advisor um, and they're really there to, and maybe Jason, you can kind of share since you've been um, a special, um, they're really there to help you figure things out. They're, you know, they stay in touch with you. Um, we've had uh, some of our orientation advisors tell us about how our pre-o participants may have texted them and said, hey, I have a class here. Do you think you can help me find it? Um, and so it's not, a lot of these programs go past pre-orientation or roadmap. You still have these relationships with your orientation advisors, with your specials that you've been paired with um, to kind of help you figure things out. Um, and then con real candid conversation of what it's like here to be a student. Um, and I know our students uh, in pre-O are not you know, uh, shy about that. They're ready to share their opinion and their experiences on being um, a student here at UR and what that looks like and how exciting that is and sometimes just challenging too. Um, but we have all those conversations in pre-O and that special, little special, big special relationship um, is, is really important for us because it kind of gives you that first person to, to, to hold on to for a little bit. And, and like Jason said, this is just the start. Whatever you relationships you create in pre-O or a roadmap, these are the start of relationships, right? So you're not holding to any of these. It's just a way for you to, um, to, to not be or feel um, by yourself once you, once you get in there. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about specials a little bit. They're just like, they're, they're really important. Um, it's really good because it's like your first experience, I guess, with kind of meeting an upperclassman. Um, and also just to add to that, the pre, the orientation advisors that go and help you um, or, or your kids during uh, the pre-orientation programs will also be the same orientation for advisors, not necessarily the same ones that they have, but the same ones in general for new student orientation, which is kind of regular orientation afterwards. So you'll still like, they'll still be able to keep in contact. Um, I know that with the first year, we've changed it a little bit, but the first year that I was uh, like doing orientation, it was a kind of a system of like each orientation program had like one in, actually wait, no, no, no. It was a different system back then, but essentially you can still keep in contact because you'll still see your special around even during like a new student orientation. And it's just like a good point of contact in the future. Yeah, and similar to um, the specials for PRIO, Roadmap has orientation advisors assigned to each short course and very similar, um, you know, they keep in touch with the students even long after Roadmap is done and even during Roadmap, they really are the point of contact for all of the students and they form, it's really surprising and always nice to see them like form such deep friendships and connections with their students like and to see them, a lot of the OAs are always talking about how it's so nice to see their students kind of flourish as the years go on. Um, and I think that's a part of being an OA that they really enjoy. Um, there was a question about, do you actually move in on Sunday and stay in the dorms before orientation? So yes, so you move into whatever your room assignment is on that Sunday. So you're moving in three days earlier um, and you would just move in and you would stay there through orientation and then obviously like through the rest of the year. Um, there is a question for Priya, but before we get to that, I just wanted to say one thing, and that is that all of these programs, Prio, Roadmap, Appalachian Trail, and International Orientation, all of the transition programs are free of cost. So there is no additional cost to you as a student in order to participate. So you don't but, have to pay those three extra days to eat in the dining hall mm -hmm, or to mm -hmm. stay in the dorms. That is free of charge if you decide to come in. Um, and participate. You do have to. You do have to register. 
but that's it. <laughs> right. Um, and so how many students are accepted to Prio? So we like to keep it intimate, but we don't have a cap, right? So we want to make sure that any student that wants to come and experience uh, multicultural pre-orientation can do that if they apply by the deadline. Um, but we like to create smaller uh, venues and groups for students to get to know each other because still it is uh, it can be overwhelming once you get into new spider orientation it's a ton of people all really cool people but a ton of people for you to get to know and meet and interact with and so we want to make sure that multicultural prio is a little bit smaller so that those relationships can be a little bit more meaningful um, earlier on also one really great benefit to participating in these programs is that they also come with real people that work there every day. So I work in the Office of Multicultural Affairs. And even after you participate in PRIO, you will still have myself and Dr. K to reach out to, um, to talk to, uh, to figure out what other programs we offer for multicultural students. And so I think that's a really great thing too for Roadmap because you'll always have Akila and you'll always have Andy um, there to, to continue to, to talk with uh, through some additional programs that they offer um, through, your, through their office. So it doesn't stop just with our transition programs. I think that's a really exciting thing about it is that you have offices that are attached, uh, that are there year round providing opportunities for all students on campus. But I think it's particularly special um, when you've met those people ahead of time that you know you can um, come back to after the program is over. Mm -hmm. Morgan, there's another question that says, do you know how PRIO differs from regular orientation? Yes. So the point of all of these transition programs and particularly for PRIO. So PRIO is for all students of color, students of color, new student orientations for everyone that is a first year student. So that's one big way that it differs. So when I say students of color, that is African American, Black, um, Latinx, Asian, um, Asian American, Pacific Islander, uh, you know, that student population. It is specifically geared toward and primarily serves that student population. So that is one very large way um, that it differs. And then in the sessions that it offers, because it does uh, primarily serve students of color, our sessions are focused on um, ways in which we can help you um, as a student, as a person of color, really find, you know, your way in the very beginning, right? Because some of you may be coming from different backgrounds, different experiences. Some of you may be already experienced in understanding what it means to be a person of color um, in a predominantly white space or majority space. And some students may not know how to work through that yet. And so that those are the kind of things that we uh, work through in PRIO. And then we also have a ton of fun. Um, New Sparta orientation is also really fun, which I'm looking forward to <laughs> what you all are looking for that too. But um, that's a large way. Uh, one of the largest ways that it differs is the population. Um, and then also to the size and our and, and, the, and the sessions that we focus on to, to make our students ready uh, or feel ready to, to then you know, transition into this group of all of your first year student peers. Yeah, so, so roadmap is, oh, you go. Oh no, I was gonna say, so road, roadmap is also a pre-o. It's so interesting because the program has always been called multicultural pre-orientation. All programs are called a transition program. So roadmap is not pre-o. Prio is not roadmap. Prio is not a part of roadmap. These are separate uh, programs, uh, but they're all called transition programs. So multicultural pre-orientation um, is just the name of our program. We call it multicultural Prio, um, and then roadmap just goes under roadmap. So it's not roadmap pre-orientation. Um, these are all mm -hmm. uh, considered transition programs. If that helped, it's really just a nickname. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say it's like over the years it's just been called Prio and yeah. 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 Any other questions? Any other questions? I think we answered this one about the parent. Oh wait, I'm gonna add something. Mm -hmm. So this is something I feel like I've heard from some first years being in OA. Uh, doing like doing Prio or I guess like the non-roadmap ones doesn't make you any less like studious as a student <laughs> it's not gonna make a big difference like academically uh mm -hmm. in your yeah in your academic life like at all so yeah like don't don't feel like you're gonna be behind because you're not taking like a mini class or something beforehand 
Yeah, one hundred. Although it is a great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, but one hundred percent. It's not like someone who took you know, one of these short courses is going to suddenly have an upper hand in the classroom by any means. Honestly, what we've heard over the years, even from the faculty members who do short courses, is that usually that time is spent talking less about whatever the topic of the class is and more about college and about how to acclimate to a classroom and how to, you know, what do I do like once the first week of classes starts and stuff like that. So yeah, there is no like academic upper hand by any means by doing roadmap. Um, it's just about what it is that you want to, I guess, like focus on for your pre-orientation experience and what you want to immerse yourself in. And the good thing is there's literally no wrong answer. So it's whatever you, whatever you choose is the right answer. Exactly. That was a good, uh, good answer, Kayla. Um, in Roadmap, is there any free time once it starts to finish with unpacking? So yes, there are a couple of breaks that are built into the schedule. Um, similar to what Morgan said about the Prio schedule, we have a skeleton up, I think, on the website, but we are hammering out details right now. Um, and But there are a couple of breaks built in so that students have a chance to go back to their rooms, do unpacking or walk around campus or really do whatever you want. Um, and we'll give you those times, you know, closer to and we really, we do understand, um, I'll share a story with you. I remember when I was a freshman and I actually did an early orientation because I was in the marching band. And I was so sad when I went uh, to the orientation beginning and they told me like, I couldn't hang out with my parents anymore. <laughs> after that and so that is not the case right we want to make sure that you still have time to get with your family if you have family coming to help you move in and you want to spend time with them great but we want to make sure that you all are able to really um do more uh with get a lot out of this experience and so if you want to go with your parents shopping sure make sure you schedule those during the breaks that we already have scheduled um the same thing we do sometimes have students that you know, while we have on the schedule, like dinner in the dining hall that they may want to go have dinner with their parents, those are great too. But also know that you are here with your peers, your parents will be leaving, even though this is really hard, you know, this may be really hard to, to fathom as you're moving in, we want to make sure that you're still able to create those relationships. And sometimes it's hard to do that um, when you're trying to, you know, st still spend time with your family and participate um, in the program. I will give one last second for some questions if you all have some. I was going to type our emails in the chat. Thank you. Yeah. One second. So that's Morgan's, right? Okay. Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's me. And I don't know. Let me just type my own. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was going to yeah. say, you should yeah. probably just, if you're comfortable. Because student ones are different than yeah, yeah. they are <laughs> awesome so those are our emails um if you all have any questions that you want to reach out to us specifically about but yeah one last call for any questions in the q a and oh also as far as i remember i think they're in the prio schedule specifically they're the first dinner is supposed to be with your parents and if they don't, if they're not like staying, then you just eat with your special. Correct. Um, and so generally that, so after the parent meeting, we have students come together with their parents and everybody sits and eats. Normally we have some really uh, delicious uh, catered food or sometimes it's pizza, which I also love, uh, <laughs> but it's a way uh, for you to kind of have that one last moment with parents or guardians or anyone coming to drop you off. And then you will officially be with us, which I think is pretty cool. Yay. Well, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. Mm -hmm. Kayla, would you like to sign off? Oh, God. Um, that's all we have for you. But thank you so much for joining us. And again, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to any one of us. And we're very excited to see you in August. But I hope you all have a good rest of your summer, a good, restful, cool summer. But that's all. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.